All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Capital Culture. I'm your host, Christopher Wheeler, and today we have a very special guest. She's burst onto the music scene with three recent singles with Spend It, Did To Me, and I believe Tempted Touch with Ram Riddles. We're gonna talk about it all today, but most importantly, it's Halloween. How are we doing today? I'm good. I'm really good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on the show and whatnot. But we're going to get to the nitty gritty. We have some good questions to ask you. But let's just start off with a simple question right now. Mm-hmm. Who is Yuana? That's a Music- big question. Who, who is Yuana? Who, as, a, as an artist, who, who, who is she? As an artist, I would say someone who's really diverse. Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid to try new things. I really love collaborating and like working with the team that I have. I've learned so much Mm -hmm. in a really short amount of time. So music has always been a part of my life, but Mm -hmm. now I've taken everything I've learned before I've come out Mm -hmm. and I've been lucky enough to come out really strong, so. Speaking of that, you've you've come out out of the gate swinging three big singles. Now, I wanna get into those things, but I wanna really know why focus on music now in your life? I know you said music was always in your life, you just said that, but why get serious now? Why have the big, beautiful production with Did To Me? Why, why really sink your teeth into your passion now at this point in your life? That's a really good question. So I think after COVID, it forced me to uh, sit down with myself and say, what do I want? And mm. it forced me to look at, okay, what are you really doing? Mm. So after a lot of time like reflecting on the things that I've done up until this point it was like you know what I haven't really given myself a fair shot to come out and um, yeah it was time it's like everything I believe everything happens for a reason Mm. even the bad things that happen to you they happen for you 100% so I was kind of blessed to come to abstract and um, work on some projects and Mm -hmm finally get to release who I am talk about uh, your inspiration for writing that track So I've learned so much from the artists that I've worked with here at Abstract. So I didn't really write Tempted to Touch Mm -hmm. pre-done. So Mm -hmm. I kind of sat in front of the microphone. It's like four or five o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting with my producer and we just were going through some beats and a melody came to mind for the track. He told me uh, before the interview, you sometimes go off the top of your head with your lyrics. Yeah, most of the time. That's incredible. So you, you foresee yourself continuing to do that when you're making music? Because sometimes, like, you know, artists start with that, but how many times can you hit a home run? But you have. <laughs> but I can just, it's just hearing a beat and then off the topping, it just seems so... It's an energy thing, kind of. Mm. So writing is a great tool, but I think I've learned from other artists, like Young Tori was the first... Um, artist I got to collab with and release mm-hmm. my song Miss Me For okay. and I've learned so much from him that like he's one of the most talented artists out of Toronto that Speak I know. Speak about some stuff that you learned from him I know just to he, not put you on the spot. No that's okay. Young Tori is one of the fastest writers um, mm-hmm. he, he freestyles so he'll sit in front of the microphone and he can go off and do 10 songs in a night Mm. He's incredible. He's honestly, I've learned so much from Tori. So more so, like in in terms of songwriting, he's helped you in the in the sense if, with his pen or just an overall just advice as an artist. You know what? It's just it's an energy thing. So I learn a lot just by being here and seeing how everyone has their own process. Mm-hmm. So writing is really important, but also just just being. Like I feel like when you really just sit and listen, things will come. Yes. Okay. So observe more, listen, and learn it faster, yeah. kind of deal. Now, yeah. did to did to me was your first video shoot ever. Yes. Let's talk about the experience with that. Yeah. Because it was quite uh, spectacular. Thank you so much. No worries. I'm really excited. It's like my first my first baby, I guess. Um, I got to work with one of my favorite directors mm-hmm. and teams from the '97 Collective, uh, Dragon Antic, okay. and. Um, He's been a really big supporter from the very beginning, before Did To Me, Mm -hmm. and uh, we were in talks about doing something really kind of old school, kind of. Because I felt the vibe, when I heard the song, I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, radio play galore. And then I saw the video, and it was just like the production was of a professional level of any artist that's in the mainstream industry. So just to come out of that and have that as your first pieces of content when you just started producing music, what, I don't know, was it a year ago? Or two? So my first single came out this June. See what I mean? Like yeah. that's even faster than I, I, I anticipated. So just to be doing that out of the gate, it, it, it speaks volumes, so. I do have a background in like acting and theater, so okay. I grew up in performance. Speak, speak about rounding up that many people for a video though. There is yeah. a lot of people, like so are those, 
so is there a budget there? Are these all friends coming together? Because like from a from let's say a young a young woman uh, uh, that looks up to you sees this and mm-hmm. she's like, how do I do this? You know what I mean? How did she get all these people for the video? Was this just people around that loved you and support you and came? came to your aid and and whatnot to help it, you make this video or it's a little bit of both okay. i have to say if anyone needs advice about like what to do or what's going on mm-hmm. do the best with what you have mm-hmm. so you can always make the best with wherever you are and i think that's what we did with did to me um coming out like i do have a very strong sense of what i want to look like and how i want to present myself so mm. i feel like all my experience up until this point has really helped me come out very very strong directing wise for that video did you direct it like were you in like were you like hey like we're gonna have me walking down here like how much creative control did you have I had a lot of creative control but again I love collaborating so uh, everyone a part of that project had a say in how we were gonna shoot Mm -hmm. Um, especially just like okay as the artist I'm gonna be taking direction from what's on the other side of the camera going on Mm -hmm. but a lot of those dancers are very near and dear to me, my friends. Yeah, I was sawing, saw the background uh, or the behind the scenes videos. And yeah. I was combing through those and I was like, how many people did she get going for this video? We had 12 dancers. Jeez Louise. Yeah, man. but a lot of people I've worked with in the past. So um, I feel like your relationships, they just kind of follow you. So I'm really blessed. The circles that I have are very creative. I have a lot of friends who mm. are also aspiring dancers, singers, actors. So it's all very close to home you know so going forward uh it was obviously a very successful shoot if you could change one thing uh about your next shoot what would it be not to stress out so much were you stressed out it's gonna be fine yeah i overthink i'm like you know i'm not a perfectionist because i don't believe in perfection but i'm really hard on myself confidence wise was it hard to go out there and get it did you did you did you did you underestimate how hard it was would be to shoot a music video, is what I guess I'm saying? Or no. was it kind of you just felt like you're at home? I was at home. Okay. It was, so, so kind of made for this industry. I don't know. We're going to see. But definitely at home. It was mm. a great first go. So I'm really happy that's my benchmark. Or Now, if you were to rank these four uh, singles from your favorite, your best work, to needs improvement, how would you rank them? Oh, that's a good question. So I had to do it to you. You did. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll take a drink. That's not I'll fair. Chill. That's like picking your favorite kid. They're all I, different. You can't do I that. I know. I'm going to have... Okay, so... I have let, five let's sisters have... and one brother, and we're all so different. So you can't do What's that. What's your favorite one? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so do you have a favorite song that out of out of your four babies? They're all my favorite in different ways. So Miss Me was my very first single. I got to do it with one of like my favorite artists. And it, I was... I was a little bit scared releasing it because I'm like, oh man, yeah. you know, this is the first time everyone's going to kind of see my, my work. Yeah. And then um, the next track was kind of R&B, Afro, and like, I love that song because it has Arabic in it and I, I really want to, I really want, ev- forth, I saw that. yeah, I really want everyone to like get to know me as, you know, an artist who can like sing in Arabic, in mm-hmm. Greek, in English and like put all that together. Mm-hmm. Did to me was my, my track that... You know what? It was just me solo coming out, had a I little thought, retro wave. Uh, if I'm gonna give a, a little advice, dare I give a little advice on the show? I think that's your best track. Did to me? I, I radio like it. I, I the the beat in the background kind of reminds me of the weekend blinding lights. Mm-hmm. And I was doing the blinding lights dance at home <laughs> when I was studying for this interview. But I like honestly, hands down, like. I'd like to see you stay in that lane, but that's just my per- personal opinion. I know artists uh, explore and whatnot, but. I think that's going to take you to that. Those type of tracks will take you to the next level. Now, that being said, as an artist, what do you feel you need to acquire personally in, in terms of characteristic traits uh, to bring you to the next level? What are you lacking? You know what? I don't like to speak in lack. I really believe in abundance. Okay. <laughs> but, you know? Okay. Um, so, if anything, um, I really love that Did To Me is your favorite because everyone who reaches out, everyone has their own. Mm -hmm. So I believe when my work is, you know, out in the world, it's no longer mine. Mm. It's kind of like, you know what? I've 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 let it go and whatever it is to you, it's as equally as important than as what it was to me when I had it, you know? So I think if anything, something I could work on is uh, just to continue to keep growing, continue Mm -hmm. to know that like the hard work doesn't stop just because you see 
little successes. It, mm-hmm. it means so much to me, but it just keeps me really hungry to keep going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so consistency, you, you just want to stay consistent and keep working hard. Now, you just said you had four different babies, aka songs. <laughs> what would you classify your sound as? Because you got to realize when you make it to the next level, you need, I don't want to say you, you need to kind of have a niche to, to curate an audience, you know what I mean? So if mm. you were to pick you want a sound, I have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> what, would, what, what would it be? Like in terms of a genre? A genre, like what, what, what kind of music would you, if someone asks what kind of music does you want to make, what am I going to tell them? I would definitely say like a mixture of pop and R&B. That's going to probably be my, my lane only because I, I don't see myself staying concrete for too long. Okay. I know you've only heard like the first four releases. Yeah. There's so much coming. Okay. There's so much done, and so, there's so many in, like niches I've kind of touched, and like okay. will continue mm-hmm. to do. But I I hope uh, that me on my own can stand as a brand, and if you hear something, you'll be like, oh, got you, wanna. Got you got you. So you've come out in Toronto, and a lot of things about Toronto is it's kind of hard as an artist to make it out because everyone's so negative. What's your take of working out of uh, the city of Toronto and do you find it to be negative in a sense with uh, artist relationships within the city, especially on the male side? I don't know how it is on the female side. I've seen a few female beasts, but in terms of, uh, you spoke about energy earlier Mm -hmm. in the interview. How do you feel the energy is for the city right now in terms of music as a whole? I think it's gonna change. It is changing, um, only because I'm going off of what I want to put out. So mm-hmm. I, I don't believe in in me supporting someone else will never take away from my success. Mm-hmm. And I really believe there's room for everybody because Toronto is so talented. Mm-hmm. Like Abstract alone has had so many different kinds of artists come in and out, and you know. Supporting each other is is I think the only thing missing in Toronto. Okay, so that, you do you, you agree with the the connotation, but it's getting better. It's getting better, and I think the more I put out that like the vibration that I put out, I, I hope that will transcend to other people to do the same, mm. to feel like you know what, yeah, we can all support each other because we're all we all have something to offer. We all have something different. A hundred percent. Now, a few more questions. I have a few fun ones. Um, yeah. One fem- uh, one male feature in the city that you'd like to get that you haven't gotten yet. Yeah. Can, can, I, I don't know. I think we all know the ultimate. Wow. Well, <laughs> okay. All right. That's yeah, my yeah, ultimate. Yeah, that's obvious. Okay. It's okay. So obvious. Um, let's say a feature you'd like to get in the s- next six months. Now, hey, hey, I don't want to hate it. <laughs> Maybe you could. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, collaborating is a big thing for me yeah. only because like, I just love, I love fusing di- things that shouldn't be, you mm-hmm. know? Or like, oh, how'd they make that work, you know? Okay. okay. And music is abstract. Everything can be what, what you want it to be. So plug in the studio there. <laughs> you know, I, I love I love it here. No, I, I really do. hundred percent. So who name a name. Name You're a dancing name. around. You're dancing. You're really putting me on the spot. I did. Okay, I, did. I don't have to say my ultimate because I think you know, but I think someone on an album coming up that's Actually, you know, so there is someone I would really love to work with. Talk to me. Bushman. Bushman, okay. I would actually, he is hot right now. I would love to work with him. I love okay. his sound. I love his style. Very unique. Yeah. The yeah. girls are bumping him. The trappers are bumping him. It's he's crazy, sick. right? Versatility. Yeah, he's really sick. Okay, now one question I have for you. Getting in this industry, it's, it's obviously, in anyone in the me- media industry, you work so much. It's so fast-paced. You're here, you're there, you're everywhere. Does you wanna have a relationship while she's in this business um, is it hard is it is it hard in your mind to entertain a relationship no but I mean like did you listen to did to me did you listen to yeah it sounds soul? like someone hurt you <laughs> sounds like well you're you're angry at someone so I'm, I'm, I'm wondering it's like that. a little trilogy we have but um no I uh, we'll, we'll see we'll see we'll see so does you want to have a man in this uh, industry at the moment? I don't know. We got to keep listening to the next singles oh! coming out. No, you know, we got to stay listening. Fair enough. <laughs> well, way to keep the audience um, listening. I'm sure we have uh, a lot of things coming from you. Is there anything you want to say to the camera that's coming out to your fans? What's what's happening with 
you want a music i know it's not that's your handle but you know yeah. <laughs> i've been studying you so hard it's like okay like something been drilling in my job. brain and then five minutes before i show up it's not that no that's okay <laughs> so like what's life. coming up so what's coming up for you uh, I have a couple more singles I'm dropping as collabs, and okay. the next one I'm really, really excited for. It's called uh, Forever, and the next one is called Feeling. So Okay, and those are coming out soon? When, when? In the next couple of months. Okay, so stay tuned. Yes. She has a lot of singles coming out, an album coming out soon, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, we've talked a lot about a, a lot of great stuff in the industry and how you're making big strides, but there was a point in time where it wasn't as easy for you and you kind of had a chip on your shoulder of how the industry ch- treated you. You want to tell the story and let your fans get to know you a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So I grew up always like striving to be in this industry. Mm. mostly like for acting and singing was kind of always second like doing musical theater being in like film and television and doing all these different kinds of projects and it was just like I never felt good enough as I was like I learned what rhinoplasty was at 13 Mm. you know I was never the right size I was never like the right look and I always felt like these things were like out of my control so I just knew for me it was really important to stay like true to who I am because Mm. I think owning your authenticity and your individuality is huge. And if I can be like that little like shining light for one person that, hey, you can do anything you want and be exactly who you are as you are, like that's amazing. Because for me, it's like I feel like I went through like hurdles of people like taking advantage of me or, you know, saying I wasn't good enough or I had to do it a certain way or I I wasn't the right fit. I can tell those people that. F off, you know what I mean? Like, 100%. with everything, like, I'm proving it to myself now that, you know, like, I am this strong, independent woman that did it and is continuing to do it. And, you know, the industry is what you make of it. And I feel it's changing. And the only way it does is it starts with you. So if all of us kind of have our own stand and how we mm-hmm. come out, like, it's really important. So I'm really, like, looking back, happy I didn't, you know. Succumb to that pressure of yeah. you're not good enough in the sense that, like, you heard all this and you kind of just said, this is enough. I'm going to get into this on my own terms instead of with acting or yeah. singing. It's quite hard to get those looks and kind of took the bull by the horns in a sense. Yeah, it's so easy to get insecure because you're always constantly comparing to like, okay, what's in? What's good right now? What's mm. what's the look? What's happening? And it's like, you know what? It should never even be about that stuff. And when, when I really kind of just focused on my craft and just kind of like, you know what? It is what it is. I am who I am. And these are the things I want to create and bring into the world. That's when, like, it's the most rewarding for me. Because I don't think we're born insecure. People make us that way. Yes, it's... uh, Social media is a wicked demon. It could be a great tool and it could be a great uh, obstacle. And it just depends how how your perspective is on it. But it's glad to hear that you've overcome these things. Especially for women in the industry. I do... It's it's all hands on your knees, shaking ass on your thought shit these days, and there's so much. Which is cool. When with with it's cool and whatnot, but you like know? it's hard for like it's it, it puts a lot of pressure on young ladies these days, and like you know, uh, God bless Meg the Stallion, but you know, you just a- have to know who you are and what you want to do, because I I fully support that too. A hundred percent. As well, a woman, you know, yeah, like yeah. if that's what we want to do. Liberate yourself. Liberate. Exactly, but you know, just also know there's another side, and it's okay to be strong and like who you are and. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know if I should say this. Say I don't, it. Let but. it go. Let it out. You can text me in a few days saying, Chris, I ain't feeling that. And yeah. I would say I'm You know what? Maybe. I might. Because, you know, this really pissed me off when I saw this on TV, okay? Okay. Was this recently? I don't know. But, like, this this is a big, like, iconic moment. I think everybody knows. Okay. So, I love, I love the Kardashians. I think they're wonderful. Me too. No, I think they're brilliant women. I actually... And they're, they're entrepreneurs. They're incredible i'll say the same thing about paris hilton i, yep, I feel like agreed. she has the, she's smart people think she's she's not dumb. she's incredible no anyways it's it's a, it's, it's kind of like a i don't want to say a, it's, it's a personality that sometimes played on tv please of course please go into your kardashian spiel no I'm listen i just remember like kylie was talking about why she got her lips done like she was insecure because a boy she kissed said her lips were too thin i would have said that boy can kiss my ass and i love my lips mm-hmm. but instead it's yeah. like, let me alter myself mm-hmm. to fit. Okay, now I'm good. Have you ever thought of... All the time. Mm. All the time. And I fight with myself. Like, you know, 
is this the thing? Is this gonna make me feel better? So is, I, you know, I have a perspective on this, and I was seeing a girl in Toronto about two, a year and a half ago, and her 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 outtake of this is, I'm just gonna get everything done, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Isn't that peace of mind? Yeah, but what happens when the standard changes again and you're Isn't on the billboard and guess what? Big, big lips and bushy eyebrows aren't in anymore and your thin waist is like not the thing anymore and the fat ass mm. isn't the thing anymore. It's always changing. The standard Touché. is changing. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's like, why are we going to conform and contort and break our bodies and still be insecure? And it's mm. like, if I can be in this industry as authentic as I can be and also say, hey, I'm not fully secure about everything going on, but... Mm. I, I know for myself, someone's watching this the way yeah. I would have been watching this if I was younger. And I wish someone was there for me to say, hey, you can be, you know, um, Greek and Lebanese and, and have a unibrow and a mustache. And one day, guess what? All the girls are going to want that those thick eyebrows. And all the girls are going to want to be this size. And it's that's not the point. But also, I wish when I was younger, I knew like, hey, there's someone out here who's like really real. And I feel like it's changing. There are artists I look up to now. And when you say you, when you wish you were younger, what stages are you talking? Are you talking developmental stages as a woman, 17 to 22, 23, and really seeing the the, the industry and social media like I'll bear tell upon you, those years as, as, as you're aging? Where it changed was I remember being like stick thin, like Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen, the modeling stage. That was huge. And then Kim Kardashian came along and made it cool to be like this size. Now the squat rack is just always. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna change. So knowing that, you know what? I can be who I am as I am and be comfortable mm. and know that it's not gonna take away from me accomplishing, you know? Mm. I wanna be an artist or an actress or anything in life. Like just this industry is tough and like having, having that peace of mind within yourself, knowing that, hey, I'm gonna be okay as I am. I really want to be that for somebody. Now, hearing this, it's very sh it's strong word and it's strong word, coming from a strong woman. Who in your life helped you get to that point? My mother. Okay, so we have <laughs> your mother to help you. I to thank for that. I Yo, my wondering. mom and I, we would argue all the time, and I'm like, Mom, I'm getting this, 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 this done as soon as I'm this age. She's like, Why? She's yeah. like, No, you're not. Like, don't do it. Mm -hmm. And she was right, like she was so right. And me just even appreciating like my friends. I would never want any of my friends to change the way they look. But, like you look perfect. Mm. And to think like we all kind of have these demons we struggle with, it's like, especially nowadays with social media, face tuning, body tuning, no this, tune no this, that. Tune this, tune that, no, no. It's like the more comfortable you are like being real, it, yeah. like you'll be okay if someone says something that's it's kind of like okay you want to see here something weird i do this it's really weird okay this is really weird but i do this so i used to get bullied a lot when i was younger okay like high crazy school? Are we talking high school no no grade talking? school high school i was like oh, f okay. everybody <laughs> i was like i'm coming up and everyone can do their thing okay but this is what i did to really like be strong about it mm. i'd practice i'd be like you wanna you're ugly and you have no friends and i do it and I'd, i would do it to myself and i'm like that's a big oh, No, I'd be like, oh, great. Now what? I'm good. I'm in, okay. In the mirror. Yeah, I would start I doing that. Sure no, no, I would start doing that. And okay. I'm like, all these people who would like think they had something on me, they didn't because I, I would like prepare myself. So I feel like even now as an adult, I kind of do that. It's okay if not everybody likes my music. Mm. I'm not doing it for you. It's okay if you think I'm ugly. It's fine. That's your perspective. You have the right to think that. Mm. You have the right to think anything you want. It's like how I think of myself that's going to help me stay in this industry and stay strong and, you know, stay supporting other women and even guys who are like, you know, feeling, you know, maybe I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. Mm. You're 100% good enough. Everybody's good enough to be where they are and meet yourself where you're at. Well, I don't know if you watched the Miracle movie, but that speech is giving a good run oh. for, for, for its money because that, that was very good. Um, well, you Sorry, wanna I had music. to get that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to, excuse me. Get that off my chest. <laughs> um, so that being said, do you have anything else to say? I'll edit that in. That was, that was hard. Thank you. That was, oh, I don't want to say replace the meat and potatoes of this, but <laughs> it might have. <laughs> that was good. No, you know no. what? I'm, I'm here to stay. I want everyone to know, like, I'm not going anywhere. Talk your shit. No, I'm, I'm talking to that camera now. I'm like, shit I, right now. Let's go. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm here to stay. I'm here to grow. I'm here to bring everybody around me, like, up as well. So I'm going to continue to be who I am, continue to put out music, continue to create. And thank you guys for sticking around.
Is there anything else? I want to make sure that you get everything out to your fans. I know we are speaking about some sort of giveaway before. Yes. I'm going to let you, the floor is yours. So okay. Camera's so, there. So another uh, collab I have that's out, my mm -hmm. next single is called Spend It. Okay. I did it with Nina Jane. She's also a, an artist that works out of Abstract and I work very closely with. Okay. So the track is, come, is already out and we have the video coming out November 10th. Mm -hmm. but we're going to be doing a giveaway and nobody really likes what we were doing beforehand. We're giving away we, like this basket, some what shoes, was in the basket? tons of stuff, was, like eight, $800 worth of stuff, okay. like great stuff, Switcher. my oh, favorite what? things and nobody likes it. And we're like, you know what, Nina, it's a spend it challenge. Like the video's crazy. We went, we went hard for the video. So we're going to give away $20,000. Mm -hmm. 20 cash, $20,000 cash. What do I got to do to win this? Yo, you got to follow the rules. It's a big giveaway. <laughs> Can we rig it? <laughs> Pardon? Can we rig it? Absolutely not. I'm trying, I'm trying, people. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> no, absolutely not. So Congratulations. That's crazy. Just to do that, that's a congratulate. Like, that's huge. Thank you. No, okay. we're both very serious about our craft, and we, mm -hmm. we both really, like, invest a lot of time and energy in, in, like, our art as artists and our videos. And mm -hmm. this collab, like, it was so much fun to do together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're, like... Let's just up the ante. So tonight we're gonna go celebrate. We've got a few people to hang out with. You know, it's a costume party. It's Halloween. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Well, spend it coming out. Twenty racks being given away. So uh, thank you, Juana, for that. And uh, is it Nina? Nina Jane. Nina Jane and Juana giving away twenty racks. I need to step it up. Uh, Amazon <laughs> gift card, fifty dollars. Uh, Capital <laughs> Culture coming out ASAP. <laughs> Anyways, uh, stay tuned for that Spend It giveaway. You heard the details. There'll be more on Ioana's page. I keep saying Ioana because I'm nailing it now, and I can remember. <laughs> Anyways, thank you. That's Christopher Wheeler with Capital Culture. Thanks to Ante and Melissa, the owners of the studio. It's a lovely studio, Abstract Studio. So thank you for letting us produce content out of here. We'll be back shortly uh, with another interview. Chris Wheeler and Ioana signing guys. off. <laughs> Cheers.